Good morning. Welcome to PJ Knits. I'm so glad you came back today. It's been a few weeks since we've talked and I will apologize in advance for a couple of things. First off, the lighting sucks. Um, it's fall and that means at 10 after 7 in the morning when I'm videoing this, there's no sunshine out yet, barely. So we're doing artificial lighting today. But anyway, fall is here and I'm super happy about that. The leaves in central Illinois have not started turning yet very much. There's still a tree down the road that has a little bit of red like I talked before. But for the most part, they're nice and green. And we're at cooler temperatures today. Today it was um, the upper 40s and still is, and it's gonna go to the upper 60s. And so we're kind of in central Illinois, that roller coaster mode where we're going to have lots of temp and fluctuation. And, you know, I kind of sort of like it because there are days that you can still get those summer clothes back out and wear them till the bitter end. And then there are other days where you can pull out a super cool shawl and um, wear it. So today um, is... Um, Thursday, September 27th. It's a hospice day and that's why I'm recording this morning. And so I'm mindful of the clock so that I can get out of here and be there on time. But anyway, I'm so glad you all stopped by today. Um, if you are my sons, you can turn away now because there's no content here for you. It's strictly knitting. Anyway, so let's just get started. It's um, I'm doing this on the fly today. I've got some sh uh, um, short um, show notes here and um, whether I stick to them or not, um, we will see. So anyway, the other thing is we have been dog sitting this week. Um, our son is away um, and we are dog uh, sitting his 80 pound Husky who has been very good up until yesterday. Yesterday, um, he was a bit rambunctious when we took him on his evening walk and it continued through the evening. Um, got wrapped around some bushes outside and wanted to play and instead of get away from the bushes Consequently stepped on my foot that I had surgery on and I was not happy with him <laughs> But then this morning at 3 a.m. He got grandpa up and because grandpa gets up at 4 o'clock grandpa was okay with that But grandma was not and went back to bed and then when I got up this morning I discovered that he had carried a canvas bag that I had gotten at stitches Midwest last year um, while he was upstairs with Grandpa, and he brought it down and proceeded to put a rip in it. Um, it was a free bag, no harm, no foul, but the last couple of days he's been a little a little snit. So um, I think he, he's wanting his uh, dad to get home and get back into routine, and that will happen this weekend. But right now, um, <laughs> he's in on my bed sleeping, so we'll see how long that takes, how long that goes. But Anyway, let's get into the knitting. Today I want to talk about um, my sweater project again. Because of the cool temps, whenever it starts hitting those where it looks like it's going to stay cool, I keep I get in panic mode and think, oh my gosh, what can I wear? I have no sweaters coming up. And so um, I've been on this um, my sweater project the, the last couple of months. And so I'm kind of um, working towards that. So that's what today's theme um, is going to be. And um, a question I, I want to pose to you. How do you get a sense of style? It's always been tough for me because I've seen others who, who can just throw on a shawl with a top and look so stylish or a sweater or pull an outfit together. And that's not me. And so I'm wondering, how do you get that sense of style? For me, I have a thought of where I want to be at some point in time in my style, instead of just throwing something on and going. Um, but first off, I have to confess, I'm not a shopper. Um, I don't like to go out and shop the stores. And in our area in central Illinois, it's very hard to find a good department store locally. I can drive about 45 minutes away to do that, but I'm not really a shopper. And um, so it's tough, I think, too, in that respect to pull something together. But in the late 70s and 80s, probably when I, I felt like I wanted to be a little bit um, on the edge, um, 
I would check out, I worked at a local department store and I would check out what the um, display department would put on the mannequins. And that kind of gave me my sense of style then. And um, rather than going and picking out pieces, I'd be, I'd be like, I want that outfit. Give me everything from head to toe. Also at that point in time, probably in the 70s and 80s, I was a catalog shopper. Now, we had J.C. Penney that came in, if, if you're older, remember the huge fall, winter, and the spring, summer catalog that we got every year. And it was fun to look at that. But the catalog that really um, gave me a thought, that a sense of style of what was going on at the time, was what we called Spiegel Catalog. And the thing that was so cool about the Spiegel Catalog is it was an off-size um, catalog, thin, and it was pretty much all fashion. At the end, it would have some stylish um, home decor, but it was all very much stylish, cool shoes, cool looks. And I loved to open up that book and, and um, that catalog when it came in and dream. But of course, in, in that catalog, as is a lot of things when you see style, it is on these skinny, tall models. And you think, oh, that's really cool. And you envision you want that look, but yet it's it's not happening because that's not your not your style. So anyway, um, as I progressed trying to figure out what was style with not having any, um, in the late um, very late seventies, very uh, well, I shouldn't say that mid eighties. Um, I worked at a uh, fabric shop in Peoria called Off the Bolt. This was a division of Vogue Fabrics. And we had, they were all fashion fabrics. And they were, um, a lot of the fabrics that we would get would be fabrics from the ends of like Donna Karen knits, um, uh, Calvin Klein uh, plaids and tweeds. And so um, the manager at that time of Off the Bolt, Nancy Erickson, that I worked for, she had a real sense of style. She would um, eyeball um, New York fashions, and then she would come back, and she would um, take Vogue patterns, um, and she would make those patterns and get um, a look or a knockoff of, of a designer look and would put it together. And I learned... At that point in my life, I learned a lot about fashion from her because she really got it um, when it came to um, uh, sewing and sewing a look that, that was fashion conscious, but yet, uh, and duplicating other, other designers' efforts, but really a look of her own and putting colors away. And I learned um, so much from her, um, that aesthetic at the time. So um, now I... As I progress through the years, um, and again, life changes, work changes, not working as much, um, and then um, going to work for the college, um, having to do more of a business um, type um, wardrobe at that time, um, I called upon some of those, those sewn objects that I had for my off the bolt day, but then it became less, um, I had less time, I felt, to sew. So at that point in time, I started getting a lot of my clothes from QVC because then it did not require me to go out and shop. And um, I could see them on models and some of them, and still now I do a lot of shopping on QVC for clothes because um, they show them on different models and I can kind of get a, a, a feel for how they might look on me. So um, a lot of my style sense was, is, was coming from that. Where I'm going with this is what about knitting style? Because right now in my sweater project, there's so many things that I really want to knit and I want to show my sense of style as a knitter. And I am um, able to wear those to work now and feel confident in them. So that is really kind of what spurred a little bit of my sweater project on because I wanted to be able to showcase that I am a knitter and um, in all aspects and of my life. So um, fast forward again, uh, that's now. And I just wanted to show you something that in um, 2014, I, I really kind of started, I brought that um, thought that uh, from my off the bolt days um, and Nancy's 
um, ability to, and I'm going to call it knock off um, a look, um, I brought that to my knitting. And I became um, heavy watch looking on to Pinterest. And I haven't been so much lately because I think Pinterest and has changed a bit um, for me, or I've just not taken the time because I've used a lot of time in Ravelry uh, as well. But I pulled out a notebook that I had not too long ago, and I really kind of, um, I wanted to share this with you. And a lot of these ideas came from, um, again, these are ready-to-wear looks um, that I was finding on people's boards, and they looked to be like they were sweaters that um, that I I liked. I liked the sweater look. I liked the colorway. And what they would do is they would put these outfits together of different um, pieces for a wardrobe that were um, were that sweaters or shawls or scarves were um, a part of. Now the things that were in the Pinterest boards that I was saving, um, they weren't knitted. But I thought to, when I found a look that I really liked that I could go out and then find a sweater, a yarn, and then build my look from those. And so um, I want to re-investigate that on Pinterest um, and see if I can start doing it for now. Now, the looks that I have in my notebook are looks that I still would like to do. And I have uh, patterns um, that I... Um, that I would like to investigate for this fall and winter as well after I get some of my other ones. But I really liked this, the, the, um, the idea of pulling these looks together that other people have come up with. Now, granted, there are some things that are in my, that I'm going to show you in these pages that I would change up. I wouldn't wear this boot, but I could get this color of a shoe or I have this color of a shoe. And so um, back in 2014, I called this 2014 Knit and Fit. Um, looking good, feeling good, and knitting sweat sweaters that are fashionable that fit me. Now, at the time, I um, also would like to have had be a little bit more fitter, and that goes across the ages. I'm always going to say that. At 90, I'll probably say I wish it was a little bit fitter. But anyway, that was where I was going um, back in 2014, and I want to reprise that as as into let's call it 2019 um, knit and fit and um, I want to include feeling good and that is by getting a handle on some weight issues dropping some weight following a, a good diet plan and um, as well as getting more exercise during 2019 um, I, I am going to start it in 2018 but there's there are things that you you know um, uh, you can do now, but that is my goal for 2019, is to do knit and fit and, and uh, have a sweater wardrobe and bringing back these same things. But anyway, I'll just give you a little a quick see of what my 2014 pages kind of sort of looked like. And these are still looks that I would like to do for this fall and this winter. Um, and go back, and I want to see if this continues, if this is something I can still do on Pinterest. And what you can see from this, I had made notes um, next to a lot of these and said, you know, what pattern I would like to use um, for them. And if I had color, and this the name of this cardigan that was similar to this was called Ink. And there's, I, I have knit this particular um poncho I just need to block it and so some of these things are what I want to do for um, 2019 um, again I would do it for 2018 and get busy on it but the only problem is I have some obligation knitting between here and December and so um, it's going to be difficult to get this together but that is kind of my my thought plan here is this particular brown one and I have some cool alpaca um, in the yarn room and I just so and what I'm going to do is what I continue what I was doing then is when I find those patterns I'm going to add them into my notebook here so that I will be ready and have an idea um, here is another idea for that that um, ink sweater storm mountain so I'm just going to add them to my little notebook and that is my plan for 2019 I'm going to start getting ready in 2018 
But I wanted to share this, my notebook with you and a plan for going forward um, in my knitting um, wardrobe. So I would love for you to tell me uh, in, in the Ravelry group, how do you get your sense of style? Where do you pull it from? Um, I'd, love to, um, I'd love to get your ideas on that. Now, let's move on to uh, knitting, other knitting. Um, I have finished Veronica, um, the knitting of it. It is currently downstairs on the table. It is ready for blocking, but I'm not going to block that until after um, Kane leaves this weekend because it's wool and uh, we're gone during the day and I'm a little bit afraid of <laughs> him uh, smelling the wool and going after uh, my Veronica, but I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, please, um, those of you who are knitting along, would you post in the group your updates on it? I'd love to see, um, uh, Annette, I'd like to see yours, how you're doing, um, and also Bindu, um, and anybody else who is also knitting on it. And, um, there's no race for this particular item because as I said, uh, in, to my friends, you know, sometimes it takes me as long to block and sew it together as it does to knit the thing because, I intensely dislike blocking and sewing together. Um, I would love, again, I would love to have a local company that would do that for me for a price. But anyway, so uh, Veronica is done. Um, looking forward to sharing with that with you in the next couple of weeks. Um, currently, I have a sweater on the needles that I'm working on now. This is my the sweater that I'm going to right now until I um, uh, get some swatches done on another one. I'm working on Uzo. And I am loving this particular one. I am to on the back right now, and I am to the lace section. And this is out of Magpie. I've shared the yarn before with you. This is Magpie that I bought at Stitches Midwest. And so I'm up to the laces. It's a gray blue. It's going to be so denim friendly. And um, this is this. I'm having a lot of fun with this right now. The cool thing about it is this lace pattern is only 30 rows so um, I think by the weekend this should be past the lace and I can move on a uh, couple of uh, then onto the front so that's Uzo that I'm working on right now um, and now I want to share with you something that is super fun um, the next up and I need to swatch for this next up is a, a um, sweater pattern that just came out a week ago by my friends uh, Susan and Sally Rainey, the Rainey Sisters, and if you don't look at their blog, um, you should. It's called uh, therainysisters.com. Um, they just put out a sweater pattern last um, week, and I have received it, and um, am working on um, deciding what yarns to knit it out of. Um, a week, in the last week, um, Susan was interviewed by uh, Christy Glass on Christy Glass Knits on the YouTube, and uh, <laughs> on YouTube, sorry. And it was a fantastic interview. And if you've not seen it, go out, please, and watch um, Susan on Christy Glass Knits. It's a fantastic interview. Um, I, it enlightened me to things that I didn't know about Susan um, after spending, you know, a, weeks with, a week with her every summer uh, up at knit camp. There are things that I still didn't know about her. She is an amazing knitter and um, technician, when, and so is Sally, her sister. Um, I encourage you to check them out. But anyway, their, their pattern is called Pickpocket. And this is um, a super cool sweater that I think that gets a, will, I will wear a lot. The thing that makes it Pickpocket is that they've included, I think it's six or seven or maybe eight different pocket details that you can do. And this is just one of them. And it is, um, they have used a jewel um, adornment there to hold that together, but you don't have to. And so I am looking forward to this. Um, this is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And I, if you remember, I bought some Brooklyn Tweed Shelter um, a few weeks ago for the Weekender in the tartan colorway. And this was going to be my weekender. But then when I coerced um, the yarn brand out of Susan, she told me it was shelter and I have enough of this to make my pickpocket out of it. So what happened was 
that's all I had. And so I started pulling some colors of things and I didn't have any other shelter. So I got um, online and went out to uh, Wool & Company and they are in a few hours away from me and I knew that they, are, they could get me the yarn quick. So I had them send me some possibilities. Now, what I really thought initially was that I wanted to use this one, which is called Almanac from um, them, which is a blue. It has some blue in it, but I just don't think that that's going to pop enough. And I put these colors all out on Instagram and the resounding um, uh, number one pick was Neither of those, not that one. The other one that I um, I chose because I thought would be fun, there's a treatment that goes around the neck in the contrast. And so um, then I picked out cast iron, which is a black, of course. And again, this would be okay. I don't know that the... Um, Pockets would show up that that great. And so then the other one that I picked had them send me is called Cinnabar. And this is the one that I think is, is the one that I'm going to go with that everybody sort of liked. It's a orangey red. It is not um, a brick red. It is more of an orangey red. Let me get that like there under the colors. That's more truer. And I think that's the one that's going to go to be the go-to. So, so I'm so excited about Pickpocket by the Rainy Sisters. Um, I'm I'm going to swatch on that when I get a chance because I'm anxious to start that sweater and get it going. I'm looking forward to it um, as my next one. But in the same time frame, I am working on Uzo as well. So um, check them out, please. Um, I I love them both. Uh, dearly they're like I said they are great great knitters and uh, I'm so pleased that they've got their um, um, new pattern out so uh, look into it okay um, <clears throat> books and bags um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Handy Woman today I told you on the last one that I picked this up but I couldn't tell you anything about it because I hadn't started reading by Kate Davies this is um, a great book. I'm not that far into it, but I am up to the point where she has just had her stroke. And it is very, a very interesting read. It is um, truly, I think, um, going to be um, enlightening on her experience. Um, I, As I said, I just come to the point where she had the stroke. And um, I'd be interested if any of you who have read it or are reading it are to that point, and when you saw, uh, heard about her stroke, were you like me, and did you go, wow, something happens, and it's like, wow, um, just wow. Anyway, I recommend this book, um, again, um, it is uh, her triumph over adversity, and it's um, very interesting, and I'm enjoying the read that I've done so far. For that so I wanted to tell you about that also in bags uh, I succumbed to a fringe supply bag in the gray and the reason I did this is because I yes I have a lot of bags um, but I wanted something that was sturdy this is a sturdy canvas for going to work on because um, in the um, fall and the summer when the weather is nice and I can get outside and knit at the picnic table. Um, I want something I can just toss on there and, and because it's a picnic table. And this is very much that. And so I did a fringe supply bag. It has some pockets on the inside, um, a drawstring, and I got it for its uh, serviceable colorway. So that's my latest bag that I got. And again, has a leather handle that I can um, carry along. It is housing right now. Um, a prayer shawl and I wanted to share this with you first what I wanted to do um, I'm, I'm going to start doing a little section about um, hospice and prayer shawls because um, I think that will help me um, keep going on knitting more shawls for them and blankets and it is a cause that is dear to my heart um, uh, the, like I said we go there um, twice a month 
is a great group of women and it just is so calming and I so much need that twice a month um, getting away from work and putting perspective in life so um, I encourage any of you who have um, hospice homes out there um, to investigate starting a hospice prayer shawl ministry um, it is so rewarding and I can't say enough about um, the hospice home in Peoria and the staff and the facility it's it's just super amazing but anyway um, so I wanted to talk about hospice shawls that I'm working on. I got a, a new, some new yarns last week at our local yarn shop. I went specifically to go looking for yarns for hospice shawls. And right now, what we're liking really there is these colored um, yarns, hot cakes. This one's a Plymouth, it's hot cakes. And I bought some to donate to hospice, but this one's mine. I, I think it's super cool. Um, excuse me. And um, it reminds me of someone. Do you all know who? If she watches, she will know. This reminds me of you. But not only that, I thought it was a cheery, uh, cheery yarn to do. I bought two of these, um, and I am using for this particular yarn a pattern that comes directly from the uh, website from Plymouth. It's a free, and it's a hospice prayer wrap, I believe is what it's called. And I've started that. I'm loving it to the pink. I, and the thing that's so cool about these yarns is you can't wait till the next color change. Do you want to see what it's going to be? So I'm enjoying this. This is going to be a wrap. It is not very big, but this is great for wrapping over shoulders and also if anybody's in a wheelchair or just throwing over their legs in a, in a bed. So I'm so excited about this particular um, knit. I'm going to knit on it today. Um, I have a prayer shawl that I have been working on probably seems like for months when I go to, to ministry. Um, I am doing it out of folio. I've had um, its uh, folio. So it's kind of a lightweight yarn. And this one is called Water's Edge. This is a cabin four design. I've made a couple of these for myself and for friends. And so this one is in progress, but I needed a little change. And this is um, some yarn that I bought, uh, the folio I bought, um, Several years ago on my birthday, um, my friend Debbie and Becky and I went over and celebrated my birthday at Le Mouton Rouge in um, Bloomington Normal. And I bought this yarn then. And I have one more color that's going to go on to the white when I'm, when I'm done. It's a lighter purple. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to carry this one on for, oh, I don't know, a couple of more inches. And then I'm going to add this purple as the end, which will have a big chunk on it. And um, so I'm working on that for hospice. So that those are the couple of hospice shawls that I have in my bag that I'm, I'm, I'm taking with. Um, still in my <laughs> silver shed bag from Easter, but the folio sheds a bit. So in the bag, there's a lot of shedding. And I'm, until I'm done with the folio, um, I'm going to leave it in here and knit out of it. And then when I'm done, I'll take my vacuum to it and get those fibers out of there and then um, put this away just for springtime knitting. So that is what is um, on um, the needles for hospice. Um, last week we received um, in the mail, I received my new issue from Schoolhouse Press of wool gathering um, of a shawl that Meg has done and I can't wait. I think this is going to be a hospice one too. I think this would be great to knit for hospice. Um, um, I, I love the Schoolhouse Press little um, um, wool gathering comes out a couple of year, uh, a couple of times a year, spring and the fall. And so I just love getting these and, and seeing what's going on with Meg and the family and new products. And um, I just um, really, truly, this is a, a super cool publication that um, I, I just enjoy getting, uh, looking forward to every um, uh, twice a year. Um, <clears throat> while I'm talking about Schoolhouse Press. 
um, was saddened to get the news yesterday <clears throat> that staff member uh, Tammy Robus passed away. Um, Tammy was a longtime employee there at Schoolhouse Press. Um, we saw her last in July at camp. Did not um, know until we all uh, returned home after camp that she had been sick. That's why we didn't see her as much there. And um, Tammy was a breath of fresh air. She had a hug for everybody. She didn't know a stranger. Um, she um, would, um, when you called and you'd say, hey, this is Penny. And she'd say, hey, Penny, how you doing? Or on Facebook, I'd say, hey, did I renew my uh, wool gathering? And she'd come back, fire back right away. Yeah, you did. And um, I'd say, oh, I got to have that. And she says, I put one away for you or whatever. Um, she was a gem. And I know that she will be sorely missed by all of us, um, <clears throat> as well as the staff um, at Schoolhouse Press and her family. Um, sympathies go out to you. She is going to be very much missed. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Tammy, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. So um, those are some things that are going on. Um, last off, gadgets. Want to talk about gadgets one more time. Um, I have lots of, there will still be more gadgets down the road to show, but I think, uh, and I will try and do um, periodically some on the uh, um, podcast video, but I want to show you something. I am so super freaking excited about this, girls. Um, I on, um, was watching uh, and follow uh, Paradise Island. Um, on Instagram and she does a YouTube video and she is a lover of aqua and turquoise it would seem. She is a maker of bags um, and uh, I follow her and I saw something on her wrist and then on her pod uh, on Instagram and in our podcast and then on our display table where she was at um, that she did and I saw a wrist ruler and of course the minute I saw that I knew I had to have it. For those of you, for the, for the, because you can't hardly see, it's turquoise. It's mine. <laughs> and I'm so super excited. And this is from Paradise Island. Uh, P A P E A R, a dice island. And I'll put all of this info in the show notes in a few days in the Ravelry group, but super cool. Another gadget for me to have, which is the wrist ruler. And in honor of um, that, um, I would, I'm going to do a giveaway. This is a 15-inch wrist ruler in silver. And I'm going to put a, a um, topic up in the Ravelry group. It's at 15 inches. And um, I would like for you to tell me in, um, in the group, tell me what your favorite knitting gadget is, if it's one I've shown or not shown. Um, or and it can be something that's not specifically for knitting, but something you're like, I would never be without this for my knitting. And uh, before the next podcast, I will give away a 15-inch silver wrist ruler that's in here. Okay, and then... Um, Oh, some other gadgets. I became enamored a few years ago with progress keepers. And I started out with Sucra Sucra miniatures. And then I um, have found Itty Bitty Delights uh, recently through my friend Amanda. And um, I just want to share some of these with you. And I think the thing I like so much about them is they're so real. <laughs> Here we have a cheeseburger with the cheese and bun. And some of them I have put these little light bulb markers on the end because I like them better for mark for holding on because the little um, lobster claw clasp was sometimes difficult with my nails to get a good hold on. And then I didn't like the way it kind of holds on some of the stitches. So now I can kind of do like three or four stitches and um, 
use that alpha crane out loud. There you go. And so this one, all hands today here, is a cup of coffee, a little cuppa. Starbucks. <laughs> Pecan pie. Yep. And then I had to have a turquoise peep. <laughs> And then I, <laughs> then you can also request stitch markers, which I did, and these were from Sucre Sucre as well. Still, coming back from my uh, child days, a ho ho. Strawberry. <laughs> Chocolate donut, probably strawberry icing. And then she came out with cheese. <laughs> and so I got a marker set of cheese. Gouda. And these are stitch markers as well. Blue cheese, of course. <laughs> and Swiss cheese. Isn't that cool? And those are from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I don't know where this one came from. This was a, um, I, somebody gave it to me somewhere, but this looks to be hot chocolate. So I cannot tell you who this came from. But then I did Itty Bitty Delights. I have uh, purchased a couple of things from her. Popcorn. And they're so realistic on top. I think that's what, I am just amazed at that. And then I love this one. It's just so realistic. And I cannot imagine how hard this is. Is that not cool? So those are just some of my uh, um, Progress Keepers collection. This particular one that is on um, my Ouzo is uh, a macaron, one of my favorite cookies, um, not only because they're delish, and I have a friend who makes them, <laughs> but um, they're gluten-free <laughs> as well. And so I have a little macaron. Macaron. Different from a macaroon, guys. Okay. And when we were in Florida, we went to a macaron shop and we got all kinds of different flavors. They were so cool. I just, it's like biting into a, mmm, just a, mmm, um, it's just delish. Anyway, so those are my, some of my progress keeper um, um, marker collection in food from different, uh, from a couple of different vendors. And I will link to them in the show notes as well. Um, another, um, uh, gadget that I wanted to share with you is a, a miniature walker bag. I have a few of, of these bags in the larger versions of for holding your accessories and things in, but I picked this one up from Great Yarns at Stitches Midwest a few years ago. And the thing that I love about this one is this is great just to throw into, into say your project bag and go with, you know, um, some stitch markers and um, so it's a little walker bag. It has, you could also, if you want to, this particular one has a little um, hook that you can hook it onto a zipper or onto the outside of a project bag on the go. So it's handy. You can do that. And you can put things in it. This particular one, I, I bought these from School, this, from School House Press. But it's a little doggy snips that I put in it. And if you just need to cut a real quick thread, those are in those, in there. And so I put those kind of things in my little walker bag. And again, you can it's small enough, you could throw it in your bag as well, in your purse, um, if you want it on the go. So I have a couple of different sizes of these 
And um, so I like putting these in my little in my little Walker bag, um, just to be so on the ready. I have little crochet hooks that I'll share with you at another time if I haven't. And I put those in there, so I always have something um, on the go there. Um, and then uh, two final uh, gadgets that I want to share with you that I uh, that I like. This is a new, and not really new. I've had it for a few years, but uh, row counter electronic. There we go. And you just do that and it counts your rows. If you want to clear it, you do that. If you want to clear it, you do that. It goes back to zero. The thing I love about it is you can put it on your finger. It has those little um, knobs on it that you can hold it down to your needle to any of your fingers. And so as you're knitting along, or if you're left or right, it's right there. And you can just, as you're knitting along, just go like that. And I bought these for um, my Knitwit sisters a few years ago for a goodie bag that we did. It's called a, it's called a tally counter. You can tell. And they come in all kinds of different colors. I got these off of Etsy, but I'm sure there's other places you can get them. I got them from, from exchangingfire.com. And you can get them off of Etsy's from different um, shops as well. So that's a little row counter. And then last, I want to um, I want to show you. I want to talk to you about um, something because for those of you who do um, double points, there's a lot of I, I like to keep my double points um, when I'm working on my socks, which I am my Halloween socks. I have to share this my Halloween sock progress with you. Um, this is um, out of Knit Style Yarns, out of Chic Sock. Um, the, it's fingering weight. It's from knitstyleyarns.com. Diagon Alley is the colorway in my book there. From Sharon at Knit Style Yarns. And I, I showed you the yarn, I think, a couple weeks ago. Here's what it looks caked up like. And I am knitting on my socks. I'm not very far, but I love these needle keepers. This particular one, again, is from Molly Klein Design. Sorry about that. See all the way down my throat there? <laughs> is, is everything okay? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I digress. Anyway, this is from Molly Klein Design. And if you do double points, it has the little snaps on it, which I love those things. Very holding. And so um, here's my sock so far. And I get better get move on it because October is just next week, believe it or not. I can't wait to see what it's, um, where it's going to progress from there, where it's going to go. But I love these um, needle keepers because then what you do, just take your little um, double points in there. Snap it down. And there it is. They're not going anywhere. They're all together. And really like this. And again, I will link to this from Molly Klein Design um, in the show notes in the next few days. So, look around. That's all I have for you today. Um, I so appreciate you um, stopping by and spending time with me. Um, I can be found on Instagram as PJ Knits and on Ravelry as Penny J. The Ravelry group is PJ Knits and I would love for you to come and be a member of both there and I would love for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Um, I, I really appreciate all the viewers. Um, I like um, seeing you all and hearing what you're working on and um, I hope that wherever you are um, you're going to have a great fall day. It's beautiful here and um, I hope you're knitting on something fun and wonderful and, and fallish. Um, thank you so much. Have a great couple of weeks. Um, next, a uh, couple of YouTube videos that I'm going to have, we're going to talk about Christmas because, uh, it is less than a hundred days away and it's time to start thinking about that knitting. If you haven't already, um, I have, I've got a bag ready for some knitting projects and, um, 
I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to talking to you about some uh, knitting things in uh, a la Christmas. Until then, um, enjoy everything you're doing and knit on with confidence and hope. And thanks so much. Bye.